I had a pretty typical childhood. Uh, I was born in 1975, so it was the typical 70s, 80s childhood. My mom and dad, we and my brother, uh, we lived in Searcy. Honestly, if I had not had the daddy I had, and the mom that I had, um, I don't know how it would have turned out. After I graduated with my bachelor's, I have a bachelor's in uh, theater and communications with local music from Harding University in Searcy. I went just to the real world, sold insurance, I've done all kinds of things, and I actually did pretty well for myself. But one day, it was August of 15, I woke up with horrible pains in my side. My dad thought I was having appendicitis because I was visiting them at the time. And my brother's a nurse, he's a registered nurse, so he was telling me you need to go to the ER. So as I was walking to my car, they eased, and I was like, well, because I'm kind of stubborn, oh, I'll be okay. Well, on my way to work that next day, they happened again where I was doubled over my desk, and I ended up just, I have to go. And they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. They gave me some different things and sent me home. Um, and the next day I was supposed to go back to the doctor, so I woke up and I was very weak. And I, and I thought it was because I just hadn't eaten very much the day before because I was nauseous. So I choked down what my friend refers to as slime fast, just to get something in my system. And I drove myself to the doctor. When I got there, no one could understand how I got there because my blood pressure was 70 over 40 and immediately they sent me to the hospital. After that, I don't remember a lot. Um, I remember going to get a CT scan and I couldn't hold my breath and the tech yelled at me because I couldn't hold my breath. I remember getting an x-ray and the tech found out the other guy yelled at me and yelled at him. That was quite fun. Um, and I remember getting one of those liquid diets with the popsicle and the broth, and then I woke up in ICU. They found a tick on me because I'd actually, my parents had moved. Um, we were still moving home, so I was out in my daddy's shed with him the weekend before. So they thought, that's it, we figured it out, great. And then I remember waking up in CCU. All I could see, and I'm not saying I saw the light, All you, when your eyes are closed and bright light is showing on you, all you can see is white. And my sister-in-law was holding my hand and I remember her saying, Kim, you better wake up because I don't even like holding your brother's hand. I don't want to hold a girl's hand. That was my first memory. And her and her friend Lisa were there and I kind of squeezed their hand and they got all excited and I was just like, what in the world is going on guys? I'm fine. Well, I wasn't fine. I did not know this. Uh, later on, my mom was holding my hand and she kept telling me we almost lost you. And then it, I started realizing my mouth was very dry and I couldn't figure out why. It's because I was on a respirator. What had happened is I had been in a medically induced coma for the past several days. The Sunday night is when I had the, the pains. Tuesday is when I went to the doctor uh, was admitted to the hospital. Wednesday night, the doctors told my family I was not going to survive the night. And basically, they were talking about turning the machines off. There was, was a doctor, she was a pulmonologist, a lung doctor. She changed my antibiotic. And it was one that was really bad on kidneys. And the kidney doctor, I can't think of what they're called, he said, oh, well, she's going to die anyway, so it doesn't matter. That antibiotic saved my life. It was the seventh one they tried. What had happened is three different things. One, I had pneumonia, which is why I couldn't hold my breath for the tech that yelled at me. The second also, I had, it was a, an infection that I had treated, but apparently it didn't completely heal and it went septic. And also um, E. coli. So after that, I had, I was actually in the hospital almost like three, four days short of a month. I um, actually had to, I couldn't walk because my, my hands and feet, they just weren't doing what I was, wanted them to do. Once I was able to get up and start doing things, everything went back to normal and it was, it was okay. But after that, I couldn't work for a little while. I got so bored. So I ended up working part-time because a friend of mine at church knew the reporter for the Paragold, Paragold Daily Press and they needed office help and so I went in there and uh, it was just part-time. 
I have to get all out of the house work and discovered I loved the newspaper field. Then we had a new general manager was hired and we started talking and she asked me one day, she's like, you're a very curious person. You like to get information out. Have you thought about journalism? And when she said that, I thought about it. It's like I had, and I just never, I just never thought that I could do it. So, but I figured, why not, I'll try. So I uh, enrolled here the uh, fall of 16 and just for a couple classes. I took one of them was Dr. Bhandari's media writing course. I started getting into the actual covering of events and you, know, you do in that course and the interviewing. And he kept telling me, you, you, you're good at this. The next semester, um, I got into Dr. Sitton's multimedia reporting course, and that course changed my life. That man taught me how to write. I, there's no doubt, he taught me how to write. And I discovered I love this. This is just, I get to tell people stories that don't get to be told. I was actually on campus. It was January 4th, 2017. About to begin my second semester in graduate school. My phone went dead. At the time, I was Dr. Tate's graduate assistant, and I was up there helping him with something, and you know, and I came down and just decided to check Facebook for some reason on a computer. I have no idea why I did it, because I normally don't do that. And I checked it, and I had about 15 messages on Messenger from my family, call me now, where are you, what's going on? One was from my nephew, and I messaged him, and I was just like, okay, what's going on? Because you know, that's never a good sign. And he's like, you need to get up here to the hospital in Paracle. I knew what happened, but I didn't officially know what happened. And what happened is my dad actually, um, a couple weeks earlier, because of his health, he was a couple weeks shy of his 81st birthday. And he, uh, it got to be too much to take care of him. And I never wanted to be one of those, my brother and I both, we never wanted to be one of those families that would put daddy in a nursing home, but we had no choice and he loved it. Well, he laid down for a nap and didn't wake up. And, uh, That, it changed my world. I am a daddy's girl, but he was also the only one in my family that thought the way I did. It just completely just changed my life. And actually this department, the media department, rallied behind me when this happened. I looked up one day, or at the funeral, and realized Dr. Tate, Dr. Sitton, and Dr. Fowler walked in and came to my daddy's funeral. They just rallied behind me, and then, uh, and then my mom got sick. When a 75-year-old woman breaks her ankle, it's a big deal. And uh, she, it was eight months, 11 days later, she died. I really think she just couldn't stand the fact or the thought of living without my daddy, honestly. So when that happened, the department again just rallied behind me and I got messages and cards and phone calls and uh, Dr. Pitts, Professor Combs and Ms. McCargo shows up to my brother's house, you know, Paragold, that's where he was living at the time with food for my family. And I looked up at the, when we, I rode with my sister-in-law to the graveside I looked up and saw Mr. Brown and Dr. Sitton standing there and just again rallied behind my family. After that, I got a card from the department. Many of the faculty, many of the members, uh, the staff members of KSU, a lot of them signed it to just to support. A, a lot of the students, I don't think they know what they have here. I don't think they realize what this faculty, what these staff members will do, what they can do, what they have done. They just became my family. My name is Kimberly Blackburn and I'm a human of A-State.